something that I've been thinking a lot about lately is choice, right? Synonymous with decision, right? But what it really boils down to is free human agency, right? Now, here's the fascinating thing about why I think that this subject will be a really fun thing to talk about, specifically um, in regards to where I am on my journey of healing. Um, for many reasons, in this case specifically and especially when it comes to trauma and abuse, one thing that I've noticed that abuse and trauma do to a person is, and I don't mean this literally, but metaphorically blinds them, right? When you are abused, um, and as a result of that, you know, the marring, the sca the scathing, all that stuff happens, you basically become blind to yourself. If somebody believes that they are unworthy, right? It's just a belief, but they are blind to the worth that they cannot see, right? Something that I've noticed that I think is very fascinating about what abuse and trauma do to a person is it kind of places their free human agency in a state of basically being clouded, you know? When you've been through abuse and trauma and you don't do what's necessary, you know, you don't do the work to actually take care of yourself. Um, and when I say that, I mean specifically get really good therapy, you know, like actually talk with a licensed professional that knows what he or she is doing and actually can guide you through the process. You tend to not do the best that you can for yourself. I would argue and I believe that when a person is abused and traumatized specifically earlier on in life, like in childhood, there it's not that their free human agency is ever taken away. It's more so just that they've been blinded by they, they they've uh, they've been blinded from it, right? It's more so that they can't really see the full potential of their free human agency. And that can become problematic specifically in the case of personal and self-choice, right? I find this subject to be very fascinating because more recently what I've been, and this, by the way, this doesn't always have to do with just abuse and just trauma. I'll say it in a way that makes it more clear in regards to the way that I'm trying to approach it. But it, it does also have to do with abuse and trauma. Um, I had a very fascinating experience probably three weeks ago, I think it was. Maybe more. But I, I got home and I realized that my room was a mess, right? And so... My mind started running wild with ideas like, oh, well, it's a mess because I work a lot. Oh, it's a mess because of this, that, and the other. Just basically giving reasons as to why it was a mess, right? And then something fascinating happened. And I may have made a video previously on this, and I may have just specifically talked about this in a video. But something fascinating happened. Something that I would argue was very fascinating. It was a massive breakthrough for me. Um, and I'm going to validate myself on that. <laughs> Um, so I was giving all these reasons as to why my room was a mess, right? And none of the reasons had to do with why the room was actually a mess, right? And that's the fascinating thing here. The reason that the room was actually a mess was because I was choosing for the room to be a mess. Bear with me, because <laughs> I understand a lot of people might be like, why would you choose for your room to be a mess? Well, the same reason that, maybe not the same reason, but it comes down to choice is what I'm trying to say here. You choose for your room to be a mess, just like you choose for your car to be a mess, just like you choose to open your phone and go on social media, just like you choose to pick up the remote and turn on Netflix, just like you choose to go out and go for a walk. The fascinating thing about this, and I really believe in this, is that every single thing that is in my life, every single person that is in my life, every single way that every single thing is in my life is because I have chosen for it to be that way. 
If I get into an argument with somebody, it is because I have chosen to. I mean, obviously and of course. However, the fascinating thing about that and more of the background towards that part of things, if I choose to get into an argument with somebody, it might also have to do with what it is that I'm familiar with in terms of conversing with somebody and how I hold a relationship, right? Maybe I'm used to chaos and all that stuff, right? Don't get me wrong, you know, maybe conflict is going to arise in a relationship and it's going to spark a conversation, right? That's okay. How do you go about navigating that conversation? What is the energy dynamic like, right? It all comes down to choice. The more that I heal, the more I'm realizing that my free human agency, my capacity to make choices for myself is becoming less and less clouded by all the things that it was previously clouded by. And it is such a fascinating experience to watch it all unfold because like that moment when I sat down in my room and I was like, wow, my room is a fucking mess. And then my mind tried to run wild with like, oh, well, I work a lot. You know, I, I, I work too much. I don't have time, this, that, and the other. All of these different reasons, which I could also argue are maybe excuses, right? I finally boiled it down and I was like, huh, no. It's a mess because I am choosing to allow it to be a mess. I'm choosing to keep it a mess. Just like I would be choosing to approach somebody in a violent way if I were to, right? Not that I, not that that's what the choice is, but just saying that's the reality of things. And that might very well be because that dynamic would be familiar to me, it would be comfortable to me, right? Really what this is all about is the capacity for a person to see their free human agency unclouded by a bunch of shit and in many cases that shit might be neurochemical familiarity and comfort and when I say that I mean like say for instance your relationships are just always in the red right they're very high fucking throttle you know um a lot of fire and smoke, right? You're just, you're used to the chaos. You're used to all that stuff, right? So how do you approach it? How do you respond? <sighs> right? And that's comfortable and that's familiar, right? And if that is, if that ends up being the way that you choose to respond, even after your, you know, your free human agency is unclouded, you can, but I wouldn't believe that somebody would continue to approach things from that standpoint after their free human agency is unclouded because maybe they would realize what that does to their health. Maybe they would realize that that doesn't fucking work anymore, right? It's just, it's so fascinating to me. The way that I came to this conclusion of just realizing that it's like, oh, wow, I didn't previously see my free human agency in a way that was unclouded, maybe because I was blinded by abuse and trauma that is comfortable and familiar, and so therefore, because of repetition compulsion, and we just continue to do and choose based on what it is that's familiar, and therefore that means being clouded by that stuff, oftentimes, even though you might see this choice over here, you still choose that over there, right? It's fucking wild. It really is. It really is. It's fascinating. Wow. This in my life is the way that it is and it's there because I choose to allow it to be there and the way that it is. Wow. My room's a fucking mess. Not because I work too much. No. It could take me five minutes to tidy up my room. Just like it takes me five fucking minutes to take out my phone and scroll on social media. Wow. What a realization. So my room is the way that it is. It's a fucking mess. It's a fucking disaster. The way that it fucking is because, and this doesn't make me good or bad or right or wrong, right? But it's because I am choosing the fucking dopamine hit of five minutes of rushing through social media and finding out about all of my friends and family and celebrity, this, that, and the other. Wow, right? I could be taking that time to tidy up my room, but I'm not, and that's a choice. So therefore, it's a choice 
to keep my room a mess. Just like it's a choice to keep my relationships a mess. Just like it's a choice to speed down the fucking highway. Just like it's a choice to, I don't know, <laughs> pick Hershey's chocolate instead of Lindor, I think that's how you say it, L-I-N-D-T. Don't know how to pronounce it, but anyway. It's all a choice is what I'm trying to say. At the end of the day, it's all a choice. And the more aware a person can be of their choice, I would argue the better their life can be. I'm gonna end off with this real quick, by the way. In terms of personal and spiritual growth, having the capacity to see your own free human agency as unclouded as possible is absolutely a tool. It is a sharpened tool that you can use to your fucking benefit because you will make healthier decisions when you can see your free human agency unclouded versus when you can't. Specifically and especially on this journey of healing for anybody because if you're used to a neurochemical rush in a very specific way from a very specific thing that is very specifically not healthy for you, right? And you can actually stop doing that. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's fucking arguing with your significant other or consuming something that's not good for you, right? Holy shit. To see things for what they are, unclouded, free human agency, for the fucking win. Hell yeah, let's go.